Which is why I've come to agree with Penrose that the collapse of the wave function has got to have something to do with gravity. Uh, so if, forget everything mm -hmm. about a complicated quantum experiments. Just imagine you send a single photon through a beam splitter. So beam splitter does what the word says. It splits a beam. So the wave function of the photon has a 50% chance of just going through and 50% chance of being reflected. And strictly speaking, this creates an entangled state with the beam splitter. So you have 50% chance that the momentum is actually redirected and the recoil is picked up by the beam splitter. And in the other event, nothing happens to the momentum. Now, the issue is the following. So you have some momentum going to the left and some momentum going to the right. And momentum is a physical thing, like you can measure it. It's definitely there. It's so small for a single photon that we can't in practice measure it, but it's, it's something. And so the moment the wave function collapses, this energy and momentum that went to the one side in your mathematics needs to go to the other side. How did this happen? It's not compatible with Einstein's theory of general relativity. It's that, that's just mathematically not possible. And so if you try to make this work within quantum mechanics, you need to do some weird thing where, you know, the energy from this particle actually went back into the past and then forward to the other side. And I think this is where these stories come from uh, about retrocausality and mixed up causality and, and, and whatnot. But what I learned from this is that we need to think about how to quantify this energy so that it's compatible with general relativity because this is where the energy momentum conservation really comes from, which means it's got to have something to do with gravity.